Uh, hi folks, uh, welcome to another episode of uh, uh, Rugby Review. Episode, uh, sorry I'm not counting these episodes, I'm just delivering. Today I'm doing France vs uh, Scotland. Uh, game was played uh, over the weekend at Stade France Saint Denis in Paris, France. And it did live up to the standards because it really starts well uh, with a really exciting opening phases from the Scots. Uh, the ball going through some nice hands to find, finding width, you know, the running ball through their lines, finding width. But uh, nothing really happens from this opening spell from the Scots. But early on, you can see that they've come with precision, they've come with attack, they are really, they've come to France to really get the ports done. Uh, France get an opportunity from a mall inside Scotland's half. Um, from this mall, they initiate an attack. Um, this attack is wave after wave of French bodies, the big forwards, throwing themselves at the Scots. They are just so physical. The Scots are just retreating to their try line. Retreating. It's a brutal spell from the French. Um, players uh, Dupont and Tamak are in charge early on, uh, showing that they are going to control this game. They are going to string. The, they are going to control the strings. They are going. They are. They are directing their forwards. They are calling on the players. If forward is far, and Tamak is calling him to come close. He's making handsy gestures. You know, they're just, from the start, these two, 9 and 10, are showing intentions of being in charge in this game for the French, which is good, you know. Um, players like Villemcy, Machant, Jalon, Aldred, um, uh, a lot of, I think the whole pack of the, the French pack, they carry this ball, they carry in these opening phases. And after nine phases, France score a beautiful try through Romain Tamak on the left hand side there of the of the field. Again, the statement it's an intent statement of the French early on that they are here to win. They are here to dominate Scotland. Game is restarted by a kick dip <coughs> into the French half. And Anthony Jalon catches the ball and meets two Scottish players who both hit him high. On the head. Um, from this hit, he has to go for an HIA, but you know he tries to refuse, tries to hide away from his medical uh, official. But the official goes to the referee and tells the referee that Geelong has to go off. And the referee has to look, goes and <coughs> does a look at this hit because it looks very dangerous. Um, he realizes that there is no mitigation from uh, Grand Gilchrist <coughs> when going to hit uh, Geelong. So he hits him in the head and Jalo is upright. Kilchrist also goes upright. So it means no medication, it's dangerous, it's in the head. Straight red card. Straight red card. By the laws of World Rugby lately, we don't allow... The referee officials are not allowed to allow anyone to get away with hitting a player in the head. Deliberately especially. So there's a red card for Scotland. Early on pressure on, I'm like, oh my word, they're going to lose this game because of this red card. Uh, minute 7, France launch another attack from a halfway line out. Um, this attack lands them inside, this attack lands them inside Scotland's 22. Uh, from here, they spot an overlap on the left side of the field and spread it through simple hands until Dumortier goes in for a try on the corner. Scotland's numerical disadvantage is showing through here that Scotland are missing a player. So the, Fr the French realize that they have to just move the ball quickly from Iraq to catch them off guard so that they can have that extra man on the side, which is Dumont who goes into score. Um, Scott, so the, the, after 10 minutes, the score becomes France 12, Scotland nil. Uh, Scotland make a substitution. They, um, they sacrifice Hamish Watson for Johnny Gray because they have to do this because they need muscle in the 
in the back. Especially during scrums. You can't scam without a lock. Without two locks. You need two locks to scam. So they sacrifice Amish Watson, which is sad because he's such a great player. I like him. Good player also. So they sacrifice him. Johnny Craig comes in. Um, at around minute 12, Scotland find themselves <coughs> five meters outside the French trial line. And their scum half, Ben White, gets a dangerous head. Head on head conduct with a uh, French tight head, Muhammad Hawass. For me, this conduct, this uh, is not a clear out for Muhammad Hawass. He's deliberate in his head. He hits Ben White on the head. It's a head on head conduct. It's deliberate. There's no mitigation. The level of danger is very high. So the person who's instigating gets a red card, Muhammad Hawass. So what I like most about this incident is that the, the main referee initially thinks that they, there is no intent to cause harm, but then they, the assistant referees come to the to the table and they all talk together that discuss that this is a dangerous deliberate no mitigation high danger uh head on head contact so he must give him a red card this red card comes good i'm happy i'm like okay you know the the teams now are equal it's 14 on 14. <coughs> scotland throwing a line out five meters outside the french try line and drive a very steady, good mall. Uh, Zena Fekasin nearly scores, but he drops the, the, the but the ball is dropped over the try line. So it doesn't when it when he scores over the reach over the for the try, he drops the ball. Doesn't he's not in contact with the ball. Very unfortunate for the Scots because I feel like even this line out is very accurate for them. It's very steady. It's very physical. They gain meters through this line out. They're causing problems for the French. Um. Moments later, Finn Russell looks promising. Uh, he's directing play very well. Um, he's kicking very well. By this time, he's already won a 50-22 a for Scotland. So his game looked good, game management. Until he threw a flat pass that gets intercepted by Ramos. And Ramos went all the way to score a try for France. You see, this is a mistake from Finn Russell. He's a good player, right? I like him. He he takes a lot of risk in high in in games. You know, some risks may pay off, some may not pay off. This one does not pay off because Ramos Ramos intercepts and runs the full length of the field, almost the full length of the field, to go and score a try for the French. The score becomes France 19, Scotland nil. And now I'm I'm thinking, oh boy, this is not good for Scotland. In a test match like this, you don't want the other home, especially the home team, to build a scoreboard and open a gap like you, like 19 points. It's not good, you know, you don't want to be chasing a game early so on in France. Uh, well, I still con am convinced, after this mistake, I'm still convinced that uh, Finn Russell is having a good game. Uh, uh, and 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 he proved me right because immediately after making that mistake from Ramos, he makes another huge break and uh, passes the ball to Duan van der Merwe, who nearly goes on to score on the corner, but then they don't really score because he's tackled by Jalon and is out on touch. That's van der Merwe. But again, it's a promise from Finn Russell and from Scotland that when they get things correctly, when the balls stick. When the when the passes stick, they are going to hurt France. Uh, Scotland get a a line out close to the French try line and drive a good mall. Uh, the ball comes out to to Finn Russell, who throws a beautiful flat pass to Hugh Jones. My goodness, what a beautiful try, a beautiful try Scotland score in this passage of play. Such a beautiful flat, flat, uh, flat pass, and Hugh Jones is making a very beautiful run also to get the ball from Finn Russell to go on and score from France. You see, that's why you want, as a coach, you must have some faith on your players. Other coaches have been thinking, hey, should I take off Finn Russell? But no, he's kept on and he makes this beautiful pass for this beautiful try by Hugh Jones. Um, this game is hot. I made note that I've never seen Scotland so accurate away from home. 
they are so accurate. Their passes are sticking. They are running some beautiful lines. Uh, it just it's beautiful to watch. I'm not seeing any mistake apart from the mistake that Finn Russell made earlier. They are very impressive. Ben Wyatt is also massive in this game. This is the game where I realized why they love Ben Wyatt so much. Well, the other games also has been good, but this game I realized why I think him and Ali Price are gonna have gonna be fighting for that jersey. So after this score from Hugh Jones, no team really scores until half time. Then the teams go to half time. The, the, the score is uh, France 22, Scotland 7. Seven minutes into the second half from the Shades, Scotland start again an attack from a line from a line out just outside the French 22. And after four accurate phases, again they are very accurate in their phase, in their ball retention, ball recycling. They score a try through Hugh Jones again, second try for Hugh Jones. It's beautiful. It's just so much precise. They are punching through the French defense. They are just making a lot of inroads in that French defense. I'm sure Sean, I'm Sean Edwards is just pissing himself in the stands there because these boys are really not doing well here. Again, accurate from the Scots. Uh, from this, the French again front up with their own attack in response to almost go score in the corner, but Dumotier gets held up by the Scottish defense. Again, the, the, both teams are now attacking each other. It's neck for neck. Uh, the home team is like, we're not going to lose this game. Scotland are like, I'm going to win this game for the Grand Slam. Uh, but for me, Scotland are more impressive because they are the away team. They are more impressive. They are relentless in their attacking spells. They are good in defense. They are very disciplined also, you know, disciplined team. In the past, Scottish teams were not doing, were not do so well. And Scotland are... That's really impressing me here. Um, the Scots get another opportunity to go through another attacking spell with a scrum uh, five meters out from the outside the French uh, try line. The French retreat, it advantage Scotland. The ball comes out of the scrum to typology for a crash ball. On the second phase from that crash ball, the, the ball is given to Finn Russell who's making a good run to crash over for another Scots try. Beautiful. Finn Russell again, showing his class, showing his, his organization, showing that from he can redeem himself from mistakes and come back in the game and just, you know, uh, direct his team and make his team win. The score becomes France 25, Scotland 21. I'm thinking now, by this time, Scotland have an opportunity come back and win this game. Finn Russell is their main man for Scotland. He's controlling the strings. He's making the kicks. He's making the passes. Uh, you can clearly see that the game plan is revolving around him um, for the Scots. Um, three minutes before full time, France get a line out five meters outside of the Scots tie line and promise to score but nothing results from this attempt. So the French are trying to also open the gap between Scotland and themselves because they realize that Scotland are very close in terms of the scoreboard points to coming and uh, to, to, to winning this game. Um, so nothing happens. It's an advantage to the French. They are close to the, to the, to the Scots uh, try line. Uh, the French uh, number 10 replacement, Jalibé, does a quick tap and passes the ball and then the ball gets recycled and the ball then gets passed again to Kyle Ficot, who crashes over the, the Scots try line to go and score a beautiful try on the 80th minute. Um, this is beautiful from France. It just goes to show that France have a have good depth at 10. Jalibert and uh, Romain Tom Tamak. Jalibert comes in as, as a substitute and it continues at the same with the same intensity, which is good for the coach Fabian Galt here. He has good tens here. Um, so after he kicks the conversion, Jalibert, uh, it's almost 70, 80th minute. The referee blows his whistle. Final score, it's France 32, Scotland 21. What an impressive game from both teams. I'm more impressed by Scotland. I'm more impressed by Scotland, especially Finn Russell and uh, Ben White. 
Oh, they were massive. They were massive in this game. Scotland showed that something that I, I don't think I've seen this in a long time from them. That when they are playing away against a great team, they they manage to produce the goods on the night. I think they should be proud of themselves. Mm, proud of themselves. They can do something in the World Cup. You know, they always say they are dark horses in the World Cup. They are one of the teams that are dark horses for this World Cup. Thanks so much and enjoy evening. Thanks a lot.